Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Product Enterprise Limited, which might be the most generic name for a company I've ever heard, Hammer Films Dracula figure. So to honor the passing of Sir Christopher Lee, I figured this was an appropriate figure to review for you guys. And about a week ago, I had been at a toy show and saw this figure sitting there, thought about picking it up, but decided to pass on it. And then just a couple of days later when he passed away, I immediately regretted not picking up the figure. So I jumped on Amazon and snagged him. This is a one six scale figure. So about a 12 inch tall figure, similar to things that you get from Sideshow or Hot Toys. And it came out in 2004. So if I remember my figure release dates correctly, he's pretty much a contemporary along with a lot of those Sideshow universal monsters and modern slasher figures. So, let's see how this figure stacks up. Dracula comes with a decent amount of display items. We have here his little display base, which is decently done. It's a nice round pedestal, has a nice bevel around the edge. It fits with a kind of gothic horror figure. It's a very kind of gothic looking base, I guess. It has the hammer logo here in the middle, which is nice. We have this raised up little section here, which I assume was a button on other versions, because we flipped this over. We get a battery compartment and a little speaker sound area, where it says not a sound unit. So this must have had other applications for the company. Kind of interested to see what other products they made. And then it does have four little felt tipped feet here, which is nice. A lot of these stands don't. You just rest them plastic on your shelf, but these actually have little feet, which is cool. And the stand does plug in very similar to a Sideshow or Hot Toys stand. So that plugs in. You get a plastic sleeve going up here. Then we have the clip up here, very reminiscent of the Sideshow pieces where it goes around the waist. And for a comparison, here it is next to one of the Sideshow stands so they are roughly the same size around which is nice the hammer stand definitely stands quite a bit taller but if you level them out the stick coming up where the waist clip goes into goes up about the same height so theoretically your figure is standing about as high off the base on either of these pieces dracula here also comes with jonathan harker's journal from horror of dracula very nicely done a nice red leathery looking texture to it it's a very nicely done little book a lot of great detail you can see the detail the pages of course it doesn't open it's just a solid piece but a very nice accessory very fitting for the movie and for the book dracula because large pieces of the book of dracula bram stoker's novel is taken from jonathan harker's journal so it's an appropriate piece to have with this figure don't tell dracula but it also comes with a crucifix which actually cracks me up because i see a lot of pictures of people putting this around his neck which just doesn't work for me at all but it's a nice crucifix it's plastic but it's a very nice silver sheen you can see it reflecting the light there it has a beaded almost rosary-esque kind of chain to it. I know it's not really rosary, but it's the same idea. I don't know, it reminds me of that, if nothing else. The only part I don't like is this cheap-looking piece of tied off silver string here that just looks very cheap but the rest of it is very nice and if you have a figure to go with dracula this could be in their hand so they're able to repel him and then we get this very cool looking candlestick really nice nice brass color very dirty looking and then we have the melting wax and fire coming off of it the fire it's a little cheap looking it would have been really cool if they could have done a translucent effect or something but given the age of this figure this is about what we would expect on a figure from that time so i'm not going to complain about it too much much. As for the figure itself, I think they did a very nice job on the likeness. It looks a decent amount like Christopher Lee. Definitely in his full-out vampire crazy mode. Fangs bared. His eyes looking very bloodshot and crazy. A lot of nice wrinkles around the eyes. We have some nice graying in the hair here. It's definitely not a Hot Toys quality sculpt, but seeing what Sideshow was giving us at the time, I think this is actually better than those. The paint is a lot more matte, which at least from the Sideshow pieces I have from that era is a big improvement. They often and went with a very glossy plastic and I actually think this captures the feel of the character very well. The only problem I really have with it is the head feels a little oversized. Coming down to the rest of the body, we do of course have cloth clothing. Now this definitely feels cheaper. This is not the high quality Hot Toys stuff. Even not nearly as nice as some of the things I have on my sideshow, Freddy and Jason. This is kind of reminiscent of stuff that I'd pick up when I used to do customizing work that was just a little cheaper. It just feels kind of plasticky and not really like real fabric. But from a visual 
visual perspective, it is really nicely done. It's this really nice suit jacket here. We can see all the buttons here in the middle. Collar is even on there, a little breast pocket. Come down to the wrist, we can actually see the shirt underneath coming through with a little cuff link there, which is very nice attention to detail. The shirt only connects with one little clip here, which I feel like it needs at least two. And underneath, I don't know if that's what a shirt would really look like. I'm not really sure what the entire costume for Dracula looked like in the film, underneath the jacket and everything, but we can see he has this very interesting looking shirt. And I'm not really sure what this black piece is called. This is like an extra piece up here in the front. I don't know if that's old Victorian style fashion or something that I just know nothing about, but it's there. We also have this big cape on him, which I really like, and it's a very nice weight to it. We have a big thick collar up here around the top and it just flows down very very nicely it has a good weight to it a satiny finish on the inside but a matte on the outside it's just a very nicely done cape I really like it it ties around his neck I'm too chicken to try to untie it to get it off his head to see what he looks like without it but I really dig this cape the pants are decently detailed I think on a modern figure we would have actually gotten a belt in there but here it just kind of velcros in the front but they are kind of pleated he does have nice shiny black shoes there at the bottom I also notice he doesn't have socks and he has some weird weird coloration going on in that leg that's odd but it kind of feels like socks would have really helped this figure because if the pant leg comes up at all with any leg movement it really feels like he's missing something going back up the hands are really nicely done i love the veins going through them there's actually almost like a little scar or something going on there really nicely detailed and he's got the pinky ring over here being a one six scale figure he does have some good articulation the head can swivel side to side can't really move much up and down which is a little bit of a bummer i thought maybe it'd be on a ball joint it does tilt a little so i feel like it should have a little more range of motion but it's it's that style where the neck is incorporated into the head, so I think it's just lacking a lot of mobility there at the base of the neck. The shoulder is on a pin socket joint, so you can go very far up, very far down, forward and back, hindered only by the clothes. We do have a bicep swivel, a double jointed elbow, very nice. You can rotate at the wrist, and there is a hinge there as well. Feels like we have a mid-torso kind of ball joint. We could also rotate at the waist. Legs can go forward and back and out to the side. You could swivel at the upper leg, double joint there at the knee. And it feels like a ball joint at the foot, but we could really only get a swivel with the way these shoes are done. For a size comparison, here's Dracula next to the Sideshow Collectibles Freddy Krueger figure. And, well, I think this size comparison is goofy, less because Dracula is not a good height, and more because Freddy isn't. Freddy is actually way too tall, especially for the character. I believe Sideshow used the same exact body for Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and Leatherface and all their characters, which tends to be a little larger than it really should have been. But definitely comparing these two together, Christopher Lee being a very tall man, and Robert England not being a very tall man, these two definitely aren't in scale with each other, but it is kind of cool to see two classic horror monsters together. And here we have Dracula next to what I consider the standard for 1-6 scale figures, Hot Toys. And yeah, maybe Christopher Lee is a little short here. Maybe he should have been on a slightly larger body because, once again, very, very tall man and he's barely up to Arnold's shoulder here. But it is cool to see these two side by side. I feel like this Dracula figure is definitely closer to the hot toy I'm comparing it to than he is to that sideshow piece, which is pretty impressive. So overall, I really, really like this figure. I'm so glad that I went ahead and picked it up because honestly, I hate to say that if I hadn't picked it up now, I may never have. By not being put out by a major company, at least in the 1-6 game, it's not a company I've heard of for anything else either, this figure has some level of obscurity to it. But the production on it is pretty darn good. It exists, I feel, in this middle ground between some of the sideshow offerings of the time and Hot Toys, which the only Hot Toys I have are pretty modern. There were some Hot Toys coming out around this time, which are nowhere near as good as the new ones. So I think for a figure that's as old as this is, it's a pretty freaking solid release. So Dracula here gets a recommend. I am curious, I do want to look into this company some more and see if they did any other Hammer Horror figures. A Dr. Van Helsing would be pretty darn cool. Honestly, just any Peter Cushing would be kind of neat to have alongside Christopher Lee. Whether it be Van Helsing or Dr. Frankenstein. And licenses like this and Universal Horror are definitely ones I really hope somebody else picks up in the near future. Because I would really love to see modern toy making techniques put into some of these characters that had their heyday in the early 2000s but haven't really gotten much attention since in the 1-6 scale. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this is another Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.